This is the concluding tape demonstrating the World Jiu-Jitsu Federation advanced component techniques. Here is a short compilation of just some of the advanced techniques you will see later on. The following moves take you from dual modules right through to multiple defense applications. This particular form of training develops fluidity, flexibility and coordination and will result in a defender's ability to move from one technique to another, creating a chain-like structure. We commence with escapes from a back arm and collar hold and finish with interlink counter and combination moves. This technique incorporates a straight arm lock from the white belt syllabus. Step forward and strike using the back of the fist to the lower rib cage. It is important to have your left hand in a protected position to prevent any further attacks. In this case, it would be a knee attack. After blocking the punch to the stomach, it is vital to take your opponent's wrist in your right hand and move your left hand up to prevent a further punch. This technique includes the shoulder lock and the yellow belt syllabus. Piercing on your left leg allows time and space to execute an accurate kick to the face using the top of the foot. When practicing, encourage your opponent to protect his face with his hand, as this will help as a focus point for your kick. This demonstration incorporates the shoulder arm lock from the yellow belt syllabus. Now from a different angle. While stepping in, deliver an elbow strike on the side of the jaw. This is a variation. Following the strike, Apply shoulder lock, bringing your opponent onto his toes, weakening his resistance. Note the position of the defender's arms during the lock. You can see how, if these simple points are adhered to, how easy it is to move into reverse figure four leg lock. Side pocket from the green belt syllabus. This is a particularly heavy throw and to encourage safe practice. Always hold the back of your opponent's head during the takedown. Hold down with double arm lock from the green belt to complete the technique.
The armored shoulder throw with wrist lock and from the brown belt syllabus. This throw is particularly dangerous. Care should be taken during the takedown. After blocking the punch to the stomach, take the wrist in an arc, giving you the space for the kick. Invert the wrist, starting your left leg away, bearing all your weight against his shoulder. The lock is made more effective by leaning forward. The secret of all effective locks is to maintain stable and well-balanced foot positioning whilst keeping the correct distance from the opponent. From this close-up angle, pay close attention to the elbow lock, wrist lock, punch of the solar plexus and the correct arm position is required for a perfect figure four lock. The yellow belt syllabus once again provides a lot for this technique. Try to coordinate stepping to the side of your opponent while blocking a palm heel knockout blow to the chin, having been perfected earlier in the brown belt syllabus, but now proved to be invaluable before applying this falcon lock. Once again, this is a potentially dangerous technique. Particular care should be taken during the takedown. But this effective headbutt is used here as a stunner. Viewing this close-up, the following points are worth readdressing. A step forward and strike to the ribs. The protecting arm against the knee strike. The wrist and elbow lock. The leaning away from the opponent. The breaking technique of the elbow against the shoulder. The strike to the back of the head after blocking the punches. The pressure under the nose during the takedown. And the leopard punch to the throat. You see at this stage how the defender is beginning to put together a flowing sequence of coordinated moves. close attention can be paid to the step to the side during the block. The position of the defender's left arm. The downward pressure applied against the elbow. And a strike to the vulnerable area of the skull.
This technique finishes with the lapel and shoulder throw from the variations in the green belt yes, syllabus. Yes! This particular throw becomes more effective when using the cross block. Taking the opponent's lapel, use your thumb to apply pressure against the throat. Note the pressure applied against the opponent's attacking arm. During this throw, your feet should never be wider than your shoulder. perfected the first part of the previous component technique, we can now take the prime element escapes from a back arm and collar hole and incorporate this into a particularly preliminary cafe. This particular form of kata training develops fluidity, flexibility and coordination. This results in the defender's ability to move from one technique to another, creating a chain-like structure of locks. Applied with each lock will narrow the options of your opponent's attack. These techniques should be practiced slowly and carefully, taking your opponent through the three stress points of each lock. Only move from one lock to the next when the third stress point has been attained. An awareness of possible further attack should always be of prime importance when practicing this kata. Foot position is also vital to enable you to gain the necessary space in order that you are ready for any further attack. Although this particular demonstration finishes with a straight arm lock, there are a number of variable options previously demonstrated on earlier videos. This is a series of escapes from back arm and collar holes, with defences against the left punch, finishing with various throws from the basic syllabus. In this case, the throw is a body drop followed by a punch to the Mastroid. This is probably the first throw you'll ever land and will always remain the foundation for all good throwing techniques. The attainments of the perfect hip throw 
will simplify your understanding of the more advanced techniques. Although standard hip throw has been selected for this demonstration, a dropping hip could have been used. The technique is finished with a basic shoulder arm lock. Note the position of the defender's left knee, pressing against the mastroid. Dropping version of a body drop on the blue belt syllabus is one of the most difficult throws to achieve if you fail to follow the correct procedure. Important points to remember are one hand is placed under the arm pushing upwards, one hand above the elbow pulling across your body, the pivoting kneeling on the left leg. Try to kneel as far behind your opponents as possible. Ensure your right leg is kept rigid and tight against your opponent. The technique can be completed with reverse figure 4 neck and arm lock. This attacking sweeping throw is from the green belt syllabus. The sweep can be affected against the ankle, knee or thigh. The move is finished with a reverse shoulder pin. The second throw will become more effective if you strike your opponent's solar plexus with your knee. Pay attention to the precise coordinated footwork. The legs should be kept absolutely straight during the sweep. To perfect this hold down, move your left leg past your opponent's shoulder. or inner lifting is from the blue belt syllabus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stroll, the pressure is applied against the inside of your opponent's knee. A reverse back hammer lock is applied using the leg. Saves and techniques are defensive against the back arm and collar hold, followed by two punches, finished with the various throws. Technique is a shoulder throw, finishes with a hold down using the bar choke. Half or full shoulder throws are particularly effective against taller opponents. Stepping forward on your left leg, apply pressure with your right knee to the mastroid. Your hand positions on your opponent's arm should be similar to when holding a cricket bat. 
Change position and move into reverse back hammer lock. Reach across and take your arm under his arm and around his head. Turn your opponent, kneeling on his right hand. You should be trapped under his body and apply a bar choke. This is a sweeping half shoulder from the shoulder variations in the green belt syllabus. Having completed this throw, it's important to be aware of any further attack, which in this case is a kick. version of a body drop comes from a selection of moves, sometimes referred to as sacrifice throws. If this throw was counted, the natural response might be a an ankle throw. you can observe the importance of the points raised about the throw in a previous set. Because of the momentum gained from this throw, this particular hold down will always be compatible with this technique. Attacking sweep control. Attacking sweep control is generally practiced in the lower syllabus from a static position by way of an attack, not as a defense. But at this level, it's important for the practitioner to cross section techniques to create more of predictable responses. Spring hip throws. Many of the throws demonstrate in the last few sections require high level of speed and coordination. The spring hip or inner lift is particularly suited for use against a taller or heavier opponent. It could also be used as a combination following the counter to the basic hip throw. Following sequence are combinations now commonly referred to as embos in the World Street Federation. The first example finishes with a back off and crossover arm lock. Take note of defensive posture of the defender whilst on the ground. At the end of this technique, a second attacker could be introduced, who would attempt to deliver kicks to the head whilst on the ground. This would possibly be countered by a reclining leg throw.
The main element of its combination is the rear throw from the brown belt syllabus, which also belongs to that family of techniques known as sacrifice throws. A throw would qualify for this category when you go to ground prior to throwing. And there may be an high risk of vulnerability. Therefore, it's essential that speed and coordination are the main priority. You can see from this angle the importance of making the opponent top heavy. This is known as the two-third, one-third approach. This particular combination takes you from a back arm collar hold into defense against two punches, finishing with a drop inversion of a body drop. From this close-up angle, you can see it is important to kneel and not drop onto your left knee. It is also wise to remember to take your left leg past your opponent. And this will result in a much cleaner and efficient throw. Outer wheel. You can see from this section of embos, although counters and combinations predominate along the defense against two punches, there is also the introduction of a third punch. This is done in order to disorientate the defender and test his responses to the full extent. to Indian deathlock. See about a combination chosen with this end bow, for example, now to hook throw into an Indian deathlock. Just how important it is to constantly revise and improve upon the basic singular technique from the Q-grade syllabuses. Too many students, after gaining their black belt, tend to forget the need to revise and practice the basic techniques taught in the earliest scope of their training. They will never be able to achieve the advanced level's ability required to progress unless they pay close attention to the old adage of practice makes perfect.
two sections include techniques from the six dance syllabus and we feel at this stage that only visual observation is necessary. Jiu-Jitsu Federation continues to be a pioneering organization and we are constantly developing Jiu-Jitsu technique. We feel that the introduction of these counters and combinations in its particular format remains paramount in our quest for the recognition that Jiu-Jitsu is the complete martial art. Martial arts syllabuses finish at the master fifth and grade, but our system has no beginning and has no end. Hence our commitment to knowledge and the total dedication of our instructors in the pursuance of excellence. demonstrates and coordinates set pieces on this video. Our overall aim is to create coaches of the highest technical ability who are flexible and free thinking in their approach to technique. They in turn will carry forward the World Jiu Federation's aims and ambitions to the next generation of Jiu Jitsu practitioners. The Federation has always been at the cutting edge of martial arts. From the early introduction of a published grading syllabus, right through to the advanced training methods that are demonstrated here. 
We are pleased at the introduction of the National Vocation Qualifications through the Sitting Guilds that we can now offer all our coaches and we will continue to endorse safe practice and good standards at all levels of participation. The particular section concerns itself with the interlinking of techniques from the advanced part 3 video with the combinations from part 4, therefore acting as a fusion of 5th and 6th down moves. This selection of techniques will be analysed in greater depth on the next advanced video, which will continue to explore the 6th down in fine detail. I am Robert Clark, and you have been watching British national coach Alan Campbell, assisted by Simon Rimpton, fifth band and senior coach. Uh, yes, yes! <laughs> With the video shown here, our advanced jiu-jitsu catalogue consists of level 1, 2, 3 and 4, plus our latest Kobudo tape, which demonstrates nunchaka, tonfa and sai, in kata and practical applications for... Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> 